What can you tell us about availability this week? Um, availability, Scotty Arfield will be out. Um, other than that, I think we've got a fit squad. Ben Bender's still not trained since the thigh injury, so he's um, lagging a little bit behind still. Uh, Brandon Cambridge um, is getting back to where he needs to be, uh, and he'll start training with us in the next week or two, I suppose, So, which is pleasing on the long-term injuries. Do you feel that, I know, that Dilson probably wasn't right where you thought he could be last year, but you think he's good to go this week? Who's that, sorry? A Dilson? Yeah, Dilson will be fine. Uh, he's trained all week. Um, for me, it was too much of a risk. I, I looked at it. And he'd come back ahead of time to train. He'd only trained two days, and I just felt, you know, why risk him for one game um, when you might, you could risk and lose him for, you know, three months with a hamstring injury. So I thought it was the right option to take, and uh, you know, we'll, he, he's fully fit now, which is really good. And during the open portion, we saw Kier went off the side a little bit. Is that just kind of maintenance? Or? Yeah, that's maintenance. He'll be fully training tomorrow, and he's available for selection as well. When you first got here, you said that you want Enzo to be between the boxes. We've seen him do a lot of drifting outside. Is that something you're trying to work with him and make sure that he occupies the area you want? Yeah, no, the, uh, he's definitely still a work in progress. Um, he's really enthusiastic, works really hard, um, but we just need to get him in the right places to, to get chances because you know, we all know the currency's goals um, for any centre forward, and um, you know he's got to get in the areas where he's going to get chances and goals. How satisfied are you with where you're attacking midfield this right now? Oh, that's certainly an area where we need to do better. We need, I think we all know that we've um, we, we've been working on it uh, over the last three, four weeks. Um, you know, as I said before, I think defensively we've been really solid and until five minute spell last week. Um, but you know, uh, in terms of our creativity, you know, we've 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 had some big chances that we haven't taken. Um, you know, last week was a case of moments that we didn't take as well. You know, the, we had some great opportunities to create big moments, and you know, uh, technically, I think we just failed on that. There's a lot made about the venue they'll be playing in on Saturday, with the dimensions of playing at Yankee Stadium. How do you adjust, adapt to that? What do you do special to try to make sure that you know what you're getting into from that perspective? Um, you know, we've been practicing, you know, running to running on bases and <laughs> 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 No, we um I've not been there so I don't know. Um I've been told it's not the biggest pitch in the world. Um but you know, it's been passed by the MLS so it should be good enough to play on and I'm looking forward to testing myself on it for the first time. Go ahead, right. uh, Dean lasted after, or Sunday after the match, you mentioned, you know, you would take time to assess, kind of, that night. Um, is there anything that you learned that, like, looking back from that night that you want to change or implement going forward? I think there's quite a few things. I, I don't think we approached the game as well as we could have done. Um, you know, I know I said before the game, uh, Sunday night, and there wasn't as many fans there, and we have to self-motivate, and we have to do that every game. And... You know, um, but we didn't connect enough in the final third in the first half. Uh, I thought we were the better team in the first half, and we didn't create as many bigger chances as we should have done. And then, you know, I thought we lost our heads a little bit when they scored the second goal. Um, you know, they scored. The, we had a five-minute spell where you know we kind of caved in a little bit. We conceded the the second goal, and then we conceded the third goal straight away from a set piece. Um, which came up from actually us having a free kick in on the edge of their box, and then we should have conceded a fourth, you know, just straight after the third. So you know, uh, our emotional control has to be better. You know, if you if you concede the second goal, then you have to make sure that you know we stay in the game. We, that's something that we've been really good at, and it's something that we lost sight of, I think, last week. And then NYCFC is a team that show has a lot to it. Um, is that like when? I guess it's interesting in stats like that happen. Is that something that you're out being curious about? Not really, because everybody was telling me, you know, we were unbeaten at home and now we're, you know, <laughs> we're not now. So, uh, you know, I, I think all these runs go. Uh, we saw Everton beat Liverpool last night for the first time at home in 14 years or whatever it was since David Moyes was manager at Everton. So, you know, 
them things happen. But you know, we have got a good record against them. Um, we've beat them already this season. We'll know a lot about each other, and um, we'll go there smarting a little bit because of you know the the manner of the defeat last week. I thought it was a harsh defeat, a harsh scoreline, you know, um, last week. Um, and I think we'll be smarting and wanting to prove, you know, that it's not all doom and gloom. What, what are you maintaining with Carwin? <laughs> what do you mean? Said maintenance with Carwin. Oh, no, he had a tight hamstring, so we didn't want to rush him uh, too much. So just make sure he had some off-feet days and then worked on the side and not. He'll, he'll be back in tomorrow sprinting and stuff. So, okay. yeah. And um, Nathan, I know um, he's been traveling and whatnot. Do you expect he could go 90? Um, or? Yeah, no, I have no qualms about that. Um, you know, we had a bit of a laugh with him this week. Uh, you know, we put pictures of him on a tour bus in London and uh, Big Ben and uh, <laughs> the London Eye. Um, you know, anybody needs a tour guide in London, he's the man now. But no, it's great. It's great to have him back. Um, you know, he's um, he's full of enthusiasm in the dressing room. He's an experienced player, and players listen to him, so it's good to have him back. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You know, you might not want to admit it, but are your English guys a little bit? You treat him a little bit like your sons and maybe a little bit harder on him than you are some of your other boys? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I probably They probably get my banter a little bit better, so uh, you know they can handle that a little bit better. Uh, but Nathan gets a little bit of it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Bridget. Um, three weeks ago, you said that Yuri was drifting inside too much. Um, is that something that you've been working on with him? Has, he, has there been improvement there? Yeah, no, there's been improvement. He's, he's a willing learner. Um, you know, we, we feel that he is one who can can operate on the side or inside as well. Uh, it's just, for him, it's getting minutes and, you know, recognising when to do what. Um, you know, but he's a young player still. Um, you know, it's his first season in the MLS as well. So, you know, it will be a softly, softly approach with him. But, you know, long term, I think he'll be a really good player. And after the... A match on Sunday, you said that Diani was a little laggy. Can you um, expand on that a little bit for us that don't understand exactly what you're saying? Yeah, so it doesn't mean that he's got extra long legs. But which he has got. But yes. That's what. I want. Yeah, I, I, he made a lot of runs in the first half. You know, probably runs that you know I, I wasn't expecting my six to be making from the halfway line into their penalty box and. You know, he, he sees a forward run and he makes it. Um, and I thought that probably just took the wind out of his sails in the second half. And, you know, uh, I just felt that his recovery runs wasn't where they needed to be in the second half. So that's why, you know, said he looked a little bit leggy. And lastly, how did you feel Rock on Sunday? Yeah, he done well when he came on. Um, you know, it's tough for him because it was 3-0 down at the time he comes on. Um, but, yeah, you know what you're going to get from Brant. And, um, you know, he's... As I said before, he's had Euracel battery, you know, he just goes and goes and goes. And, uh, you know, a fit boy and a good, boy, good lad to have around as well. So it's great that he's back to full fitness now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, anyone in the room? Go ahead, right. yes, I guess the biggest difference that I think you see in style of play from Bursa and Ring, and I mean, that kind of similar play. Yeah, yeah. they are similar players, I, I think. Um, uh, so will break more things up. Uh, I think uh, Brandt's one who's going to get in the opposition box a little bit more because um, he'll cover a lot of ground. He'll cover a lot more ground than a lot of players in the whole league, you know. So, uh, whereas I think junior strengths are breaking things up and, and, and seeing his next pass. Um, and he's very good at that as well. Cool. Go, Caleb. Andy. So, New York City has seen love to press high. They've seen a, they bring those rewards from Preston High recently. Under Cushing, uh, how important is protecting the ball in your own half against them? I think you saw on game one that we protected the ball really well, uh, especially in our own half. Um, you know, it's going to be different there because it's a smaller pitch. Um, I think their pressing stats will probably be higher because of the length of the pitch as well. But they're a very good team at doing that, so we've got to be fully aware and, and pick our right times to play and pick our right times to go over the press or round the press, um, you know, and uh, we've been working on that as well. Great, thank you. Cheers. Well, and Bridget. I don't mean well on defensive midfield, but only because Ori asked, did, I guess the way you played last week, maybe open some things up or open your eyes up to other options at that at that spot, or do you feel like 
you still getting what you want out of West Ham and beyond? Well, I think the the two of them have done really well over the last, you know, when did Diani come in? Nashville, I think he came in. He came in for the Nashville game, and uh, you know they've been pretty pretty much consistent since then. Um, you know, but there might be a time where I pull one or or both of them out because the the quality that we've got and the games that we've got coming up. But you know, uh, no, they're certainly doing okay for me at the moment. On Sunday, we didn't have a lot of shots taken. Is that something that you talk to the players about? What? How do you address that? No, it's obviously. As I said after the game on Sunday, and you know, you review it when you watch the game back. Um, it's very easy when you go a goal up or two goals up to protect that lead and 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 bank up in numbers and make it very difficult. And as I say, I don't think we we work the ball in behind their high line enough with enough quality, and our ball underneath their back line wasn't good enough as well on the day. That was probably the only thing that resulted in in less shots. Sam. Uh, so, Coach, uh, I had a more general question for you. You know, we're almost a third of the way through the season. Um, you know, what, what's your evaluation of, of how far the team has come uh, under your leadership and where the team still needs to go? Well, first and foremost, you've scared me that it's a third of the way through the season because, <laughs> dear me, it feels like I've only just been here still. Um, but, no, they're learning all the time. Um, they're getting better, uh, although last week's result would have been a – you know, certainly a, a jab on the nose for them. Um, but no, they, they're getting better, that's for sure. Individually and collectively, the thing that we haven't got quite right at the moment is, you know, um, scoring enough goals and taking our chances. Um, you know, but that's something that we keep working hard on. So I, I know, you know, chance of taking chances has been a, a question for you, but uh, on the other side of that, how do you feel about the service into the box, um, you know, at this part of the issue that, you know, our, our GP number nine has not scored a goal yet. Um, is it also a service issue? Um, it can be. It can be a bit of both at times. Um, you know, Enzo will, will tell you that he's had chances that he, he could have scored and should have, should have scored. Um, but there'll be times when he's made runs and he hasn't been seen. Um, you know, so it's, it's always a little bit little bit of both but you'll see that at the top of the game with the likes of Haaland as well you know he'll make lots and lots of runs and have chances and won't always take them um, you know what we're trying to make sure he does is you know where he's in the right areas to get them chances and then for all the work we do with him during the week that he feels comfortable when he gets in them positions there and then finally for me um, you know this past weekend obviously Minnesota was not quite a known quality we've only played them in the leagues before last weekend um, NYCFC is, is perhaps Charlotte's favorite team to play with four wins and one draw, uh, no losses. Um, how do you, you know, keep up that mentality? Is it something that gives the players, you know, a little extra confidence going into the game, or is it something where you have to be wary of the fact that, well, we, we might be expecting a win or a draw out of this team? I think, I think my sense from the players is that they're hurting from last week. You know, they were quite proud of their unbeaten run at the Bank of America Stadium and they were disappointed with the, the result and the scoreline last week. So um, I think first and foremost, they'll want to put that right. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the Zoom. John Lupo, I see your hand. If anyone else in the Zoom has a question, just raise your hand. We'll go to John first. Thank you. I think NYCFC and Hulk with an hour, if they like spread Zooms out and get off their starts to the first half. So do you almost feel like you want to make the more contact, use the narrower pitch for the disadvantage? Um, well, we, we've trained on that. Our, our training sessions this week have been, you know, with the pitch smaller, just to get the, the players acclimatised to it, to have a sense of what it's going to be like when we go there. Um, you know, so the, the players are well aware of what, what's coming and, and how we need to play you know, to counter that. So, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll be ready for that.